Hello everybody, this is TriumWear412 taking a look at the game War of the Jewels in which I played England. And I decided before this game to go with an all-navy approach. Aside from the one army that England starts with, I wanted to fight this battle with nothing but fleets. To accomplish that, my strategy was to attack in the northeast first, taking out Russia's home center of St. Petersburg so that he would not be able to build any northern fleets, and then moving southwest into Scandinavia against Germany's northern two home centers so he could no longer build fleets and then attacking France, uh, Portugal, Spain and then moving into the Mediterranean to take my last four for the 18th center victory. So we'll see how that strategy ended up working out for me. To accomplish that strategy I needed a decent alliance with France because I wouldn't be attacking him for quite some time I would need something of an alliance in the first few years with Germany because it would take me at least two years to be in a position to attack him. And so what I did was I laid the foundation for a good French alliance by setting up the English Channel Neutral Zone. And I also just didn't help France uh, against Germany, which gave me German support, uh, German goodwill for as long as I needed it. My first few moves were moves of aggression against Russia, as I said, moving an army into Norway, my fleet up into Barents Sea. And I don't help France at all in the first two years, which keeps the Germans from hating me. In the fall of 1902, when I take St. Petersburg, France also asked me to support him into Holland. That I could not well do, because I was not yet in the position to stab Germany, but I couldn't make France angry either. And so I ordered my fleet there to convoy the army in Belgium to Holland rather than support. I passed it off as an accident, and France, from what I can tell, believed me because he didn't get upset or attack me in retaliation. Um, but it didn't do any harm to Germany either. So I thought that was a decent... Uh, strategic move and diplomatic move as well to allow me to keep Germany as an ally for another season. It is in the beginning of 1903 that I make my first move against Germany, moving into Helgoland Bight, and also attempting to take Sweden, even though I don't get it. And then here in the next turn, I take Sweden and I support France into Holland, which I had promised to do earlier. I uh, build another fleet, and in the spring of 04, I'm able to take Kiel and Denmark, and Germany is almost out of the, this game. With those two centers lost to me, one lost to Russia, who was also getting seriously hurt by his once ally Turkey, that leaves Germany with one after the spring, and then... Oh, I'm sorry, I thought that France took it this season, apparently not. So he has one after 1904. At this point, I have two builds, but I can't very well use them to build two fleets, because France would be upset by that. As it is, I have eight units and six fleets. I don't know how he didn't see my... Uh, strategy or my attack from the water coming, but he didn't apparently. Um, but if I had built two fleets at this point, it would have been exceedingly obvious. So although my strategy initially called for no extra armies, I do end up with one extra. That's all right though, because with Russia being in the position he is in, I decide to use that extra army uh, and my one original army to take Moscow and Warsaw, which will give me a couple extra units, and I won't have to push so far into the Mediterranean to take the victory. I do kick Russia out of uh, Germany's last center, and France moves into Munich, so Germany is eliminated, and I start moving into Moscow in the fall of 05. At this point, I am ready to move against France. He has helped me all that he can, and I build a fleet in London, which is no big deal, but a fleet also in Liverpool, which is obviously anti-French. 
So once those builds show up, I send France a message in Latin that says, Alia Yacta Est, which means the die is cast. It is what Julius Caesar says when he crosses the Rubicon and attacks Rome. At that point, there was no turning back for him, and there was also no turning back for me. That fleet meant I was committed to attacking France, and we both understood that. Um, he put up a heck of a fight, though. It was very, very good. Uh, and we'll start to see some of that up here. Also at this point, I form an alliance with Turkey. I control the northwest, he the southeast. My thought was that we would push towards the center, towards that stalemate line, and I was hoping I could get there before he could. Um, so moving along, you see some of the trouble I end up having with France in these centers here. It takes me several years to force France out of two centers. I would take one from him, he would take one from me, I would kick him out of two, and he would kick me out of one. Um, it took a lot longer than I had hoped, and that allowed Turkey to gain some serious ground. I see again my fleet building. However, Turkey was all the way through this very uh, amiable and malleable, I could even say, um, bending to any request that I presented to him. I was very excited about that because I thought that meant that as the game progressed, as it got closer to the end, I might be able to convince him to uh, do things that were more in my best interest than his. That does not end up being the case, however. Uh, you see, I'm finally able to force France over here out of his last northern building center uh, so he cannot build fleets in the north any longer and I start attempting to push my fleets into the Mediterranean here Turkey moves out of my way as I requested again uh, doing things that I ask him to do and I continue to try to get into the Iberian centers here I push my way in finally in 1910, giving me a great angle to take both France and, or sorry, Spain and Portugal that year, which I do. Here also you see Turkey attacking Munich from Cilicia. He had previously attacked it from Tyrolia, but I asked him instead to attack from his center here because that was a center that threatened. Warsaw and I didn't want him to have an army there and again as I've said a couple times he does just what I ask him to do emboldening me even further however in the spring of 1912 he surprises me completely he attacks again from Tyrolia he moves armies into Galicia and Ukraine he does not vacate Tunis as he had promised he would um, as we had talked about a 1717 stalemate and he puts himself in perfect position to gain 19 centers I'm able to in the spring get in position to take Marseille from him which I do but that still leaves him with 18 and the win totally unforeseen um, I sold him short completely it was a great set up by Turkey, a great win. I felt almost robbed. I thought my strategy worked very well and I had hoped that it would be worth more than a survival uh, but that's what I ended up with and a game well played to Turkey. So if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them and thanks for watching.